First, let's look at the mean, because this is one that we calculate in everyday life quite often, and that is because it is the average. So in everyday life, we call this the average. And in statistics, in the core, um, in further maths, we're going to be referring to this as the mean, more often than not, mean. And the way that you calculate the average or the mean is to add together, so sum up all of the um, data that you have, and then divide by the number of data points that there are. So in this case, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of them. So there are 14 points, data, pieces of information. So what we're going to do is add these together. So 16 plus 18 plus 20 plus 18 plus 17 plus 18 plus 18 plus 17 plus 18 plus 17 plus 17 plus 16 plus 17 plus 17 all divided by 14. And that will give us the mean, which in this case is 17.429, which I've just worked out on my calculator by doing this calculation, adding all of these up and dividing by 14. Now the symbol for the average or the mean, um, if it's the mean of a population, we use mu, which is a, a Greek letter. And that means the mean when it's a population that we're talking about. If it's the population of a sample, we use an X with a little line over the top, and that means the mean also of a sample. Now, more often than not, in the Further Maths core statistics section, we're going to be talking about the mean of a sample. So generally, I would use this little X with a bar over the top. Now, we use that when X is the uh, variable of what we're talking about. If we had said all of these were a variable of Y, we might say Y with a line over the top, or we could say T with a little line over the top. But generally, we just say X because that's the, that's the algebraic term we most often give it. But if we have a couple of different uh, samples or a couple of different data uh, strings, if you like, as we will have in the... Um, bivariate section, then we might call one of them x and we might call one of them y, in which case we'd have the mean of x being one of them and the mean of y being the other. But generally this little line over the top of an algebraic symbol, that's referring to the mean. So calculating the mean from a list of numbers is fairly simple. What if we were asked to calculate the mean from a frequency table? Here's a frequency table that we put together in one of the previous tutorials, um, which outlines the, the data, it uses the data from that list about ages ranging from 16 to 20. So we're going to get the same answer, but just for the sake of um, illustration, let's figure out the mean just using this frequency table. Now what is a frequency? It's basically telling me that the number 16 occurred twice and that the number 17 occurred six times, that the number 18 occurred five times and so on. So really, if I want to um, add all of these up, all of these occurrences up and divide by how many there were, what I need to do is add 16 and 16 and seven, six lots of 17 and five lots of 18 and no lots of 19 and one lot of 20. So in a sense, what I'm doing is 16 times 2 because I want 16 plus 16 and I want 17 times 6 because I want 17 plus 17 plus 17 plus 17 plus 17 plus 17, which is 17 times 6. And I want 18 times 5, and I want 19 times 0, and anything times 0 is just 0, so I'm not going to write that down. And I want 20 times 1. So what we do to work out the um, average or the mean from a frequency table is we take the number, the variable, times it by the frequency, and then we add those up and divide by the total. So 16 times 2 is 32, and so on. Now that I have these numbers, I'm going to add them up. So 32 plus 102 plus 90 plus 20, which is 244. Now I do 244 divided by 14, which is the total frequency, all of the data points, and I get the same as we had up here, because in the end, what we were doing in this example was 244 divided by 14, because that's all of these added together. So I come up with the same answer, which is 17 point something.
17.429. And that's working out the mean from a frequency table. What about calculating the mean from a frequency table when you don't have the original data preserved? Here's a frequency table that we put together in uh, one of the previous videos that's been broken down into chunks into these intervals here. So there was a frequency of two within this range, but we don't know what those points necessarily were to add them up and divide by this total here of 30. So what we do in this instance is we find the midway point between the bottom of this range and the top of this range and then we use that number um, as a basis for calculating the uh, the mean we kind of make a guess if you if you want to think of it that way using the middle of these two points halfway between 145 and 149 so the way we find that is we say 145 plus 149 all divided by 2 so that is uh, 294 divided by 2 which is 147 so the halfway point between these two is 147 so I'm going to make another column here let me just get rid of this calculation so I'm going to make a column here for the midpoint so this next one here we would do 150 plus 154 divided by 2 which is 304 divided by 2 which is 152 so that's the midway point between 150 and 154 and so on down the line there they are completed and now that I've got a, a rough guess a rough guide for each of these um, data points I'm going to use 147 as the data point for here and then I follow the steps just as in the previous example so what I'm going to do is this midpoint times the frequency so I'm pretending that this is the data point and in the previous example we did the data point times the frequency then we added them all up and divided them by the total so this time I'm just going to do the midpoint times the frequency so 147 times 2 is 294 and 152 times 1 is just 152 157 times 5 is 785 and so on now that I've got those completed I'll add them all up which is 4995 now the last step is to divide 4995 by 30 which is 166.5 and that's the mean of this frequency table of this data oh and I nearly forgot we need to put the units on here so because we know these are centimeters the mean is 166.5 centimeters you should always add your units what if you were asked to work out the mean from a frequency histogram like we've got here? Well, it's very similar to the way we uh, calculate the mean from a frequency table. It's just that our table has now been presented in uh, this histogram, this graph, visually. So what were the steps when we had a frequency histogram? Well, we took the observation, the data, and we timesed it by the frequency, how often it occurred, and then we added those up and divided by how many there were. So we do the same thing here, we just get our data out of this histogram instead of out of a table. So I've got number of people in a household going along here, so this is one person living in the household, two people living in the household, and going up here I've got the frequency. So here I have one being my first piece of data, and it had a frequency of one, so I want one times one. Here I had two being the piece of data, and I'm going to times it by its frequency, which I've just drawn on the top here so you can easily read it off which was 3 so 2 times 3 is 6 here I had an observation of 3 and a frequency of 4 and so on now I need to add all of these up so 1 plus 6 plus 12 plus 28 and so on which is 233 and now I divide this number by how many uh, observations are in this um, this piece of data so how many there are all up so what do I need to know I need to know all of the frequencies added together 
So I do 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 7 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1 and that will give me the total number of observations. That's 43. So now I just say 233 divided by 43 which is 5.149 and that's my answer. Now the units here, if this was centimetres or something like that, um, I would put the units on there. This is people. So I could say 5.149 people, but because you can't have a decimal place of a person, it doesn't really make so much sense in this case. So you could just leave it as 5.149 if you like, and that is the mean. Now let's look at what the mode is. The mode is the most frequently occurring data point. Most frequently occurring and that is what it sounds like the number that occurs that comes up the most amount of times in the data set so from a frequency table the mode is quite easy to calculate because we just look at which data point um, which number occurred the most often in the frequency so here we can see 6 is the highest frequency so our mode is 17 this is that same data set, but just represented written out in a line. If we were presented the data like this and asked for the mode, what we would do is just count up how many times each one occurs and figure out which one occurs the most amount of times. So here 17 and 18 are the most frequently occurring. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 18s, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 17s, and the others don't occur nearly as many times, so the mode, as before, is 17. If you have a data set like this, where we have most things occurring just once, and then we have 13 occurs twice and 16 occurs twice, well, in this case, there are two modes because these two both occur the same amount of time. So the mode is equal to 13 and 16. Finding the mode from a frequency histogram is nice and simple because what you're looking for is the most highly occurring uh, data observation, the one with the highest frequency. So how do we find the one with the highest frequency? We just look for the one with the highest bar. That's this one here. This has got the tallest bar. So this one is going to be the most frequent. So it's five. It's that simple. And what about finding the mode from a stem plot? Well, again, we just look for the uh, observation that occurs the most number of times. So in this stem plot, we've got 15 and then bar 3 would mean 153 of whatever our units are. And 16 bar 1 would mean 161 and so on. So let's look at these observations. This one's only occurring once. This one's only occurring once. This one's only occurring once. Here we've got something that occurs three times, and that's 166. Um, 167 occurs twice, there's two of them there. Here's something that occurs twice, that's 175. Uh, here's one that occurs twice, that's 199. But that's it. So the one that wins is the one that occurs three times, because that occurs the most number of times. So the mode is 166.